Hi again, it's Chrissy for the fourth and final of this domestic violence prevention and reporting brief. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, please reach out to us for some of these additional resources on definitions and um, some areas that we can kind of spark conversation with the I Believe questionnaire. Um, that's something that we can provide to you. Just send us an email. We'll send that a PDF over to you. Um, the other thing that I want to draw attention to is the power and control wheel. Um, hopefully you've seen this before, but this is another handout that we can provide to you. It kind of talks about power and control, which um, accusers use to hold someone in their realm of uh, control. So they use their power and control through coercion, intimidation, emotional abuse, isolation. Again, those are definitions we all talked about under domestic abuse, minimizing, denying, blaming, using their children against them, economic abuse, male privilege, okay? Be female privilege as well too. We don't wanna make it seem like it's all against males. Physical violence and sexual violence are also used um, to power and control. So this is kind of what an unhealthy relationship looks like if you have these kind of things. So for example, minimizing, denying, and blaming, this happens in, uh, this happens in relationships. Um, it happens in times of stress. So making light of the abuse and not taking his or her concerns about it seriously, saying the abuse didn't happen, um, shifting responsibility for the abusive behavior, and saying the person who is the victim caused the behavior. Like it's your fault, you were acting irresponsibly, so I had to punish you, something like that, okay? So make sure that you, uh, and again, no relationship is perfect. So realize that if you have any of these um, characteristics in your relationship, this is an area for improvement. And the way that we fix problems when we see problems in our relationships is by saying, hey, I noticed something that I would like to change. I noticed something in myself and I would like us to have a better relationship. So make sure that you know what a power and control relationship looks like. And then I like this handout as well because it shows a power and control wheel and then it shows what a healthy relationship looks like. So instead of um, economic abuse, where I use the fact that I'm a provider and I want to, um, I want to use my power over someone else, the fact that I have economic power, I want to use it to control someone, I have economic partnership. Now, just because someone is not a economic provider does not mean that they do not have a role within the relationship and within the household, okay? So realize what that looks like and what's healthy for you and reach out to counseling or someone who can help you further understand that relationship if you have more questions about it. Um, and again, this is not to say for me to show anyone and wag my finger and say, you have a horrible relationship. This is simply for me to uh, let you know um, so that you can see areas of improvement, okay? All relationships are built on mutual trust and mutual respect. We like honesty and accountability. We want to have responsible parenting. Both parents should be responsible parenting. We have shared responsibility in the household. That means that there are not only pink and blue jobs. That doesn't mean just because I'm a man, I don't cook or take care of children, or just because I'm a woman, I don't clean cars or take out the trash, okay? We have shared responsibilities and negotiating a fairness and then non-threatening behavior all around, okay? And then the third one, I'm sorry I don't have a printout of it, is the cycle of violence is another good one to um, remind of. And this kind of shows how we have um, a general area of denial and then we have a lot of tension that builds up within the relationship over time. And then there's a massive explosion. Somebody beats someone up. Someone breaks uh, things, punches holes in the wall, um, has a massive blow up or a verbal attack on someone. And then there's a honeymoon phase. I'm so sorry. I would never do that to you. Um, I'm going to change. I'll never do it again. That kind of thing. And this doesn't have a time specific um, lapse on it. So this could be a very, very, very long period, could even be years of tension, 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 and then a massive explosion, and then years where everything is fantastic and wonderful and great. And then the last thing I wanna say with regards to the prevention piece is uh, that on average, a victim 
will say that they are going to leave an abusive relationship on average seven times. It takes an average of seven times before that person will say, I'm done with the relationship. I'm never going to see this person again. They have ruined my life. I don't want to have them in my life anymore. They will say this seven times and go back, okay? Or six times and go back on the seventh. This That's just on average. So uh, that's important to remember when you have friends who are in a difficult situation that, again, they just need a lot of care and, and support, even though it seems like they'll never get out of this. And it, it's it sometimes... Uh, friends and family, can, this can be very difficult on them as well. So know that you have additional resources. So you can reach out to Fleet and Family for additional help on that as well. Okay. Now, again, I said earlier, and I just want to reemphasize, I choose to believe that there are not bad people, that there are people who make bad decisions, who end up in bad situations, and um, need help getting out of that position. Um, that doesn't mean that I put myself in an emotionally abusive relationship or a physically abusive relationship. I do not do that. But in a in my role at Fleet and Family, we are in the business of trying to rehab and help people who have found themselves in difficult positions. For example, if I grew up in a household where my father came home drunk regularly and slapped my mother around and this was a normal part of my childhood... I might, when I'm under additional stress and in the pressure cooker that is the Navy, I have frequent moves, I'm changing my job regularly, I had some disciplinary action at work, I might fall back later on what has been a more innate, more natural behavior that I have witnessed and then become an accused abuser or an abuser themselves, okay? So just realize that that is one of the main factors is that I have been around abuse. It has become normalized in my childhood. And then when I'm on, I might know it's wrong, but under stress, I might fall back on it because I don't have other healthy coping mechanisms. So the last thing I want to show are some additional resources um, for us. We have our Fleet and Family Counseling and Family Advocacy Program. I want you to know that we also have a couples communication class. This class works best. When you catch yourself on a downslope, um, it's not going to work. It's a two-hour class. It's not a, a regularly scheduled class. It's not going to work as well for someone at the bottom of their uh, relationship. If they are bottoming out, they feel like they're at rock bottom, don't know where I can go from here, it's not going to work as well if you catch it on the downslide. That's where we really need to be catching problems. When you're annoyed and frustrated and like, I don't understand why it's not as good as it was. Rather than, I can't stand this person anymore. This is a contentious relationship and I don't know if I want to continue with it. Okay? Catch them on the downslides, on the roller coaster of life. It'll be a lot easier to go up on that upswing. Families Overcoming Under Stress is another resource you can reach out to. They have an office on, on Naval Base San Diego. They're doing telefocus right now, so you can still take advantage of that service. Focus is also another organization that you can use if you are in a relationship and you're not married. So if you're in a relationship with a civilian, you can still get the resiliency training taught by counselors through Focus. Military OneSource has the out-in-town referral for counseling. So if you want to um, access counseling but you don't want to wait for Fleet and Family or don't want to be seen coming in and out of our offices, know that they have the out-in-town counselors that you can access if you would prefer that. 211 actually right now during uh, the global pandemic, they actually have a reporting system through the military portion of 211. If you haven't used that before, you just pick up your phone, dial 211, and it'll direct you to just general information services, but ask for the additional help through Courage to Call or the military options at 211. And then again, your chaplains are a good resource. We talked about them earlier. I like to recommend these as well. They do marital counseling. So my husband and I, before we got married, we went and saw a chaplain to discuss premarital counseling. What will marriage look like? What do we want a healthy relationship to be? And that's good to have a moderator so that you can work through some of those questions that you might have. All right, that's all for me. Um, thanks again for sticking with us and the four parts of this domestic violence brief. Again, condensed, not everything is in this brief. And feel free to reach out to us for any other questions you have in the future. We look forward to seeing all of your Wonderful faces when this is over. Thanks and you guys stay safe. Bye.